language is communication, right? At least that uh, is what it's it's meant to be. It's meant to communicate to our attempt to communicate facts, figures, feelings, our emotions. To communicate them in such a way that we can connect with other people so that they can understand us, right? And sometimes that communication is good, sometimes it's productive, and sometimes we don't connect so well with other people, do we? Sometimes it's, uh, there's a disconnect between us and other people. They don't understand what we're trying to say, or we don't understand what they're trying to say to us. The men that God used to communicate his word to us used words that they understood. The Holy Spirit spoke through them, but they used words and expressions that came from their background, right? It came from their their environment, from their history, from their culture. They used words to express their heart, but words that they understood. And so then we understand God's truth through what they've said. And it's the same with us, isn't it, when we speak to other people? We use words that we understand. We use examples that are familiar to us from our background so that people get it, so they understand what we're trying to say to them. It was the same way with David. Before David was a king, He was a shepherd. Before he led God's people, he led sheep through the hills near Bethlehem where he lived. And as he wrote the Psalms, maybe years later after that time that he was a shepherd, he drew on those experiences that he had as a shepherd. He used examples from that time to communicate to us God's word, God's heart. It was his time alone with God on that Judean hillside where God prepared David to be a leader of his people. Where God prepared him, even though he spent this time in obscurity, alone on that hillside, it was God who was preparing him to lead his people just like a shepherd leads a flock. It was a time of training for him, right? Time of preparation. Sometimes God puts us through those times, doesn't he? Those times of preparation where we're alone. We feel alone. It's like we're on a hillside. And we're taking care of a bunch of sheep. But God uses those times to prepare us to do great things. And that's what happened with David. God used that time to prepare his heart, to develop him, so that he would be a man after God's own heart. You know, every season of our life, every time, even the difficult times, the extremely difficult times, those are the times that God wants to use in us if we will allow him to use those experiences, if we won't run from them. And so as David wrote down these inspired words in the Bible, in the Psalms, he drew from those experiences that he had as a shepherd. And he wrote down what probably is one of the best known and perhaps the best loved psalm in the scripture, Psalm 23. We all know it. Most of us can recite it. You know, when we're hurting, when we're in pain, when we have nowhere else to go but to God, when we're mourning over someone that we love, where do most people go? They go to the Psalms. And the Psalm that most people turn to is the 23rd Psalm was my mother's favorite psalm. And after she died, my father would read that psalm every day. 
he would read it. In fact, his Bible was worn on that one page where Psalm 23 was. And he read it for seven years before he went home to be with the Lord. I don't know if it made him feel closer to her. Maybe it made him feel closer to God. And so that's where David begins. Psalm 23, verse 1, he begins with God. He says, the Lord God Jehovah. The Eternal One, the One who was, who is, who is to come. He is my starting point. He is my point of reference in my life. David begins with God. God just wasn't an afterthought for David. Someone that he ran to when he was in trouble. To David, God was his life. God was everything. David had a personal relationship with the God of the universe. That is our starting point. We have to have a personal relationship with God. We have to have a personal relationship with Christ. If we don't have that kind of a relationship, the rest of this psalm really doesn't apply. David had a personal relationship with God. What was it that Jesus said in John chapter 10? He said this. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd who lays down his life for who? He says, for the sheep. Hebrews 13, he's called our great shepherd. The one who was raised from the dead as payment for our sin. First Peter 5, he is called the chief shepherd. The one who will come and who will rule and reign on this earth. The question that we have to ask ourselves, that everyone has to ask themselves is do I know this shepherd? Do I have a relationship with him? Can I honestly say that Jesus Christ is my shepherd? It's a question of uh, relationship and ownership, isn't it? John 10, 27, Jesus said what about his sheep? He said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And what do they do? He said, they follow me. Can we say that? Do we know that? Can we say that we have given our lives to Christ and we have a relationship with him and we have experienced that new birth in our life and we are following Christ, that we're his disciples, that we belong to him, that we have no life apart from him? From him? Can we say that? Well, if we can, well, then we are his sheep, and he is our shepherd. And since he is our shepherd, what do shepherds do? Shepherds care for their flock, right? They care about each one in the flock. In fact, they know each of those sheep by name. He knows us by name. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? He knows each one of us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. I guess that can be pretty comforting, can't it? Especially when we're going through some difficult times. But at the same time, it can be a little unsettling, can't it? That he knows all about me. He knows me better than anyone else knows me. It's easy to hide some things from everyone else. But we can't hide anything from him. He knows me. He's my shepherd. He knows everything about me. And still, he loves me. That is comforting. That's an amazing thing. That still he loves me. You know, David not only saw himself as a shepherd, he saw himself as a sheep. He saw himself under the divine care of the divine shepherd. But there's a problem. It's a problem we're all familiar with, right? Isaiah 53, verse 6, it says that all of us, everyone, every one of us, like sheep have gone astray, wandered away. We're like sheep, Isaiah says. All of us, everyone, we've just wandered away from God. And that wandering takes us and has taken us into places that hurt us, right? That aren't good for us. In fact, in the end, that will destroy us. 
And we gladly follow anyone, don't we? We gladly follow any false shepherd down that path. But when we come to the cross, what happens? When we come to the cross and we admit that we have gone astray, that we are sinners, that we are like sheep, and we've wandered from him, we've sinned and we confess that sin, and we believe that on that cross his blood was poured out for me, He died for me. If no one else, he died for me. And when we believe that, what happens? We are forgiven. We have eternal life. And we become his sheep. Why? Because he has bought us. He has purchased us with his blood. We belong to him. You know, A sheep is not on its own. It belongs to someone. When we come to Christ, we become his property. He owns us forever. So it is really a question of ownership and relationship, isn't it? We no longer have a life of our own, do we? Those who belong to Christ no longer have a life of their own. We're his property. We're his possession. And those who truly know Christ will embrace that. What did Jesus say in John 10? He said that uh, the true test of ownership is this. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And then they choose to follow me. That's what a sheep does. Follows its owner. It follows its master. So David says, I am one of his sheep. I know him. He knows me. And since I don't, be- I belong to him, since I am his, he says this in verse one, I shall not want. Fair in Hebrew. It says I lack nothing. I won't fail. I don't know how David could say that. How could he say that? I mean, he lacked things in his life, didn't he? He failed. There was a time when he was serving the king. And the king thought that he was plotting to kill him. So David had to run and he had to go hide in a cave. And when David became king, his own son rebelled against him, didn't he? And David had to run again, and he had to hide from his son. Throughout his life, David failed miserably, didn't he, as a father? He committed adultery. He committed murder. But, he says, despite my failures, despite my sin, despite my weakness, despite the pain, despite the times when I really don't understand what's going on in my life. He could say, the Lord is my shepherd. I want no one else but him. I know that he will never leave me. I know that he will never abandon me. He knows me. He knows my sin. But he loves me. And he knows what's best for me. I want no one else but him. Is that how we feel? When things get difficult in our lives? And it seems like they're just getting worse? Not any better. Do we say that? That the Lord is my shepherd? I want no one else but him. I want nothing else in my life except what he has allowed for me because he is my shepherd and he knows what's best for me. That's difficult to say. It's easy to say. It's difficult to mean, isn't it? It's difficult to say it in our hearts that we, despite the circumstances, believe that the Lord is a good shepherd and only has what's best for me. That I am in his hands. I'm in the hands of my shepherd, of my God. That's difficult, isn't it? To believe that 
despite what I see in front of me, that I know he feeds me, that I know that he cares for me, that I know, I know he's my shield, he's my protector. David says, why would I want another shepherd? Why would I want anyone else? He says, I do not want, because I am content to be his sheep. I am content to be in his care. Well, that brings us to somewhat of a decision, doesn't it? I mean, we have to decide whether we truly believe that, whether we will truly submit to what God has for us, or whether we will choose to ignore it and choose to go the other way, just like sheep do sometimes. They go the other way. They run from their shepherd. Even though their shepherd has their best interest in mind, even though the shepherd loves them, wants to care for them, they still run. They run away. That's the point where each of us has to has to realize and understand that we can't run from our shepherd. Even when things look Bad. Even when they are difficult. What did Jesus say? He said, you can't serve two masters, right? Can't serve two shepherds. We either serve Christ or we don't. I don't lack anything, David says. I don't lack anything because I am following him. I am following God. I mean, when you think about it, it was Christ who laid down his life for us, wasn't it? He's the one who bought us. He's the one who brought us to himself. Why would we want to follow anyone else? Why would we want to follow another shepherd? Why would we want to be influenced by anything else? David said, yes, he is the one, verse 2. He is the one who makes me lie down and rest in green pastures, in fields, in meadows of fresh vegetation. That's a picture that that a sheep would appreciate. But outside of Bethlehem, those green pastures were only there in winter and in uh, in spring, and they were barren in, in the summer and the fall. But David says that the Lord's pastures are always green. Deuteronomy 33, 25 says that as thy days, as thy days on this earth, so shall thy strength be. Isn't that the green pasture that he offers to us? He offers us his grace. Didn't he say his grace was sufficient for us? He offers us his strength. Didn't he say in our weakness there we will see his strength manifest in us? That is our green pasture. We are under his care. We can rest in the green pasture of his grace and his strength for us as he gives it to us every day. Just like those sheep could rest in that green pasture. But I will tell you the problem with sheep. They really don't like to lie down. Even in a green pasture. They don't like to lie down because they're afraid. They're afraid of everything. And so the only way they will lie down is if they feel safe. They feel secure. David said, that's it. I feel secure. I feel safe in the Lord. Therefore, I can lie down. I can rest because of him, because of my shepherd. That's what the sheep want to know. That's really what they care about. They want to see their shepherd there. And if they see their shepherd, they'll lie down and they'll rest. Isn't that what Jesus told us in Hebrews chapter 13? Didn't he say, I will never leave you. I will never desert you. I will never forsake you. Verse continues there and says, what can man do to me? The Lord's my helper. What can anyone do to us if our shepherd is there with us? If we really believe that. Our life is is really full of a lot of uncertainty, isn't it? Sometimes we feel like a sheep. You know, we're full of anxiety sometimes, aren't we? Maybe even depression. Apprehension. Sometimes even fear. 
But we need not have any fear, David says. Since our shepherd is there with us, we can lie down and rest. Even though the enemy is encamped around us, our shepherd is there to protect us. Psalm 4, eight it says this, In peace I will both lie down and rest, for thou, O Lord, dost make me to dwell in safety. Do we trust him like that? It's easy to trust him when we talk about it. It's a lot harder when we're going through the difficulties. He leads me, David says, verse 2. Nahal in Hebrew. He guides me. He brings me to a place uh, of rest. Physical rest, emotional rest, spiritual rest. He says he leads me besides, beside next to these quiet waters. Well, water is essential for us. We know that. Can't live very long without it. Water is essential to sheep, too. David says, that is what the Lord God does for me. He brings me to those cool, refreshing springs of water that I need to sustain my life. But you know, if a sheep is thirsty and there is no clean water, what do you think they do? They'll drink whatever water they happen to find. Whether it's dirty or polluted or it's uh, infested with parasites, they'll drink it. They don't really know any better. It is the shepherd who leads his sheep to that clear, pure water. Just like Christ. Doesn't he lead us like that? Doesn't he lead us and satisfy our thirst, our longing? Doesn't he satisfy our heart like that? You know, we may think we know what we need, just like sheep think they know what they need. But only Christ really knows, doesn't he? Our shepherd knows. He's the only one who can offer forgiveness, right? He's the only one who can offer life, eternal life. He's the only one who can give us that peace, that rest. You know, the philosophies of the world, the religions, all of them. All of them promise, they promise that they'll satisfy us, don't they? We know, some of us have been there. We understand what they say. They all promise to give us what we need, but in the end, every one of them is like polluted water. They will damage us, they will hurt us, and in the end, they will destroy us. It is only our shepherd who leads us to that place of rest, of blessing. Through his spirit he leads us, right? Isn't that how he leads us? Through the Holy Spirit? He leads us to himself, through his word. He leads us to the place of a spring of living water. And the more that we drink from his word, the stronger we become. Isn't that true? The healthier we are. Just like drinking water. The less we're in his word, the more we become dehydrated. It's like spiritual dehydration. We become weaker. That's what happens when we're not in his word. We become weak. We become vulnerable. So Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 2, he said this, that it is the Lord God who, who is the fountain of living waters. That's where we find our strength, in him. He's the fountain. He's the one who gives us that place of rest in our souls. Like a shepherd would lead us to a place of rest. He leads us. He leads us to the green pastures. He leads us to the quiet waters. You know, but we don't always understand where he's leading us, do we? Sometimes it's difficult to know exactly where he is taking us. Just like sheep don't always know that the shepherd has in mind to bring them to a place of refreshing water. They get afraid. Sometimes that's how we are, aren't we? 
Don't we get afraid sometimes of the way that God is taking us? It doesn't seem to be taking us to a place of blessing. David says this, verse 3. He restores me. Shub in Hebrew. He rescues my soul. He rescues my life. He gives me my breath again. That's what it means. He gives me back my breath and my life. He brings me back. He brings me back from the edge of the pit. He brings me back from the despair of my sin. He he rescues me from the bitterness of my my failure. Many of us understand what David was talking about, don't we? We've been there. We understand what that feels like. You know, sometimes sheep get themselves into trouble. And they can't get out of trouble. Sometimes, you know, they just lie there on the ground and they can't get up. Sometimes they, they wander off. And they get caught in the, in the crevice of a rock or in a thorn bush. Sometimes they get lost. They have no food. They have no water. And among the rocks there are predators waiting to devour them. And then the shepherd comes. And the shepherd rescues them. David said that is what happens in my life. It is God who rescues me. I'm like that sheep. I was in trouble. I get into trouble. And it is only God who is able to pull me out of that pit and bring me back. Isn't that what Christ does to us? He looks for us. He searches for us. He finds us. And he brings us back to himself. That is our good shepherd. That is what he does for us. He restores us again. David says, yes, he restores my soul, my life. My breath. He guides me. Verse 3. He says, he, uh, he places me on the right path. He says a path of righteousness. A way that's good. A way that's right. A way that's true. Sheep are creatures of habit. You know, a sheep will travel the same path. Over and over again, they'll go to the same ground to feed. Even if it's not very good for them. They'll just do it over and over again. I guess they don't learn very well, do they? Kind of reminds me of us. Aren't we like that? Sounds like us, doesn't it? Sometimes we, we're like sheep. We, we follow the crowd or we follow the world or we, we listen to our emotions or our feelings. We're not listening to the shepherd. And like that sheep, we don't just do it once. We go down that path over and over again until Jesus says, no, that's not the right way. I'm the way. I'm the way to life. You need to follow me. Why does he bother at all? Did you ever wonder that? Why does he bother with us, this this group of disobedient, self-centered sheep? How many times has he taught us? How many times has he had to reteach us how to follow him? Why does he do it? David says, I'll tell you why. Verse 3. It's for his name's sake. It's for him. It's because of his love and his goodness. Because of who he is. Isaiah 43 says that this I, even I, am the one who, who heals, who wipes away your transgressions. Why, he says, for my sake. I do it. So the world will know that I am a God, an all-powerful God of heaven. But I am also a God of love and of compassion and mercy and forgiveness. 
And that mercy towards us shows the world. It testifies to everyone. It testifies to us that he is a God that we can trust. He is a God who has character. We can believe him. We can believe his word. He is ever faithful to his word, and he is ever faithful to his sheep. David says this, verse 4. You know, I may walk halak, even though my path may take me, and I continue to travel through a valley of, a, of the shadow of death, and things look dark, and things look threatening, even frightening, he says. Even though my life is like a storm, and I struggle. He says, even though that is going on, even though for the moment there are wolves waiting on either side of that valley to devour me, he says, even though that is true, and he says, it is true, I'm not imagining it. We don't imagine those things, do we? They're real. Those are real problems we have in our life. He says, even though there is a storm around me, he said, it is God who will not leave me in the valley. He says he will take me through the valley. He will take me through the storm. And so he says this in verse 4, I I will not fear. I will not fear any evil. I won't fear the disaster that's around me, the wickedness that threatens me. He said I won't fear it. He said even though my, this might be my last breath, he says I will not faint, I won't give up. Why? He says, because you are my shepherd. And I know you are with me. Thou art with me in my life. Through every part of my life. Through every season of my life. David says, you are there. And you are my protector. Psalm 91 says this, I won't be afraid. He says, I won't be afraid of a terror, the terror by night. I won't be afraid of the arrow that flies during the day. I won't be afraid of the, the pestilence that, uh, that stalks in the darkness or the destruction that lays waste at noon. He says, a thousand may fall at my side or 10,000 at my right hand, but I'll stand. Why? Because I'm so powerful? Because I'm so mighty? David says, no, I'm just a sheep. I will continue to stand because of my shepherd, because my confidence is in him. He will fight for me. Thy rod, he says, verse 4, thy, thy shebet, the club that a shepherd would carry to fight off those who would harm his sheep. David says, I know that I can rest and I can lie down because I know you will protect me. And he says, thy staff, that stick, that uh, missioneth, the, the stick that the, that the shepherd would carry to help direct and help to correct the sheep. David says, I find comfort in that. He says, Nen- Neha, it's an interesting word for comfort. It means, uh, really it means to change your mind. It means to go from a place of mourning and weeping and despair to a place of joy. David says, I changed my mind. I changed my mind about how I, how I feel about my life since you're my shepherd. He says, you know, I even feel differently about the discipline that you bring into my life. He says, because I know you're doing what's best for me. David was a shepherd. He knew he had to do what was best for the sheep. And he says, I know, Lord, you are doing what is best for me. So even though this may not seem pleasant now, he says, there is joy in my life because I know that you are doing what, in the end, will bring you glory and will bring me home to be with you. For thou, he says, verse 5, Just prepare and and lay out a table, a place to be fed. 
Not necessarily a table that we sit out, but a, a table land. It can be a plateau, a place where the sheep would go to feed. He says, you lay this out before me, in my face, it means. Right in my face, you give me this blessing. And he says, you even, you even prepare this blessing right in front of my enemies. Those who want to destroy me, you lay out a table of blessing. Nothing can happen to me, even in the presence of my enemies, because you're there. You're there to protect me. Thou, he says, anointest my head with oil. Oil of gladness, the oil of joy. He says, you lift up my head the way that a shepherd would lift up the head of a sheep in order to pour pour oil on the cuts and the bruises and the scratches that that sheep would get. You heal me, David says, like that. You help me. And so my cup overflows. The cup a blessing that you give knows no limit. It knows no boundaries. It knows no measure because it comes from you. So my heart overflows with praise for you. Surely, he says in verse 6, certainly, without any question, only your goodness, every good thing that comes from you, And your mercy, your kindness, your unchanging love for me. He says, surely that will uh, radaf in Hebrew. Not only follow. He says, it will chase me down. You will chase me down like a shepherd chases after a sheep and brings that sheep back. He said, you won't give up on me. Everyone else may give up on us. That's true. Everyone else may abandon us. But Christ never gives up on us. He is our shepherd. He is a faithful shepherd. And David says, He, my God, will follow after me all the days of my life, every day of my life, every year of my life, he will follow after me until the end. And he says, I know that because of his grace, because of his mercy, because of his love for me, that I will dwell, I will inhabit, I will inhabit The eternal pasture. I will live in the house, in the place that you have prepared for me, and I will live there. How long? Verse 6 says, forever and ever. David says, I'm like a sheep. He says, I'm weak. You know, sometimes I'm I'm foolish, and, and I really don't have any strength in myself. So I don't even know how to take care of myself sometimes. He says, but I know who does. It's my shepherd. He knows. He knows me. He knows how to take care of me. And so I don't need to go anywhere else. I don't need to trust in anyone else. I trust in him. He is a good shepherd. He says he is my shepherd. He has a heart of compassion for me. He has a heart of love for me. For me, David says, a self-centered, self-satisfying, rebellious sheep. He says, I can rest in his care. And I can trust that he will always be there to help me, to correct me, to lead me, to guide me. He says, in my life, in my death, And for all eternity, he is my shepherd, and I am his sheep. And I will be with him forever and ever and ever. Amen. You've been listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship.
If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.